251 an easy method to jazz solos this is how to construct great 251 lines with simple scales and chords you are probably already practicing your technique scales and chords what teachers and saxophone players say is important but are you using the material to play solos and be creative with music in this video i'll take you through how to construct great 251 lines with your basic technical exercises you probably already know <laughs> Hi there, I'm Sam Balagor and welcome to Sam Balagor Saxophone Lessons. You are here, did you already drop a like and a subscribe on me? You know the buttons, just find them and support me. You are very welcome and it's very appreciated. Those likes and subscribes really inspire me to go on making more and better videos for you. Thank you so much. Coming up, how to construct great jazz lines with the basic material you already know. What are the basics? The basics are what you normally work on when you want to learn to play jazz. All your technique and music theory you need to fill in to a great bucket of information. This bucket of information you need to have at your disposal all the time. Often when we practice technique, we practice a lot of stuff we do not need. Only adding the material you always know to the bucket of information is the key. The stuff you do not know fully, leave that out. Triads, seventh chords, nine chords and scales. Triads in the scale. Triads in the scale. You need to know your triads in the scale. There are tons of exercises out there for practicing triads. You are probably already playing a bunch of them. Seventh chord are a very important ingredient when playing jazz solos. Also, there are many, many different ways to exercise these. Try your own mix of these. Of course, you need to check your ninth chord as well. Again, an exercise taken from one of my earlier videos. You definitely need to check out some of the great exercises on this. Learn your basic chords and gain material you can use in your creative process. If you need more on this, check this playlist in the description below. Learn your scales and get creative. Another basic thing you need to learn is your scales. Again, there are tons of ways to play your scales. There are different groupings. This one was a group of seven notes. You can also take three notes. Be creative when you practice. Borrow exercise which seems fun to you and go ahead. To play great solos you need to have this material ready for action. If you need inspiration on what exercise or how to make exercises, just check the links in the description. There are some great playlists down there. What is a basic 2-5-1 line? When playing a basic 2-5-1 line you use the musical ideas of your technique. <laughs> Here's an outline of a 2-5-1 in C, the D minus 9, the G9 and the C major 9. I have loosely plotted three ideas, one in each of the first three bars. So how do I get these ideas? <laughs> Starting with the D minor 9 arpeggio. Just pick that randomly from what I'm practicing and plot this into a chord progression. And I happen to like the D minor 9 or the minor 9 arpeggios. <laughs> I see that I need to hit one of the chord notes of the G9 
in the second bar here. So I choose the B. That gives me a bit of space to go down from the high E to the D minor 9. That was a chromatic line just down there, but how do I get there? We'll come to that. On the D minor 9 I've just played an arpeggio up. Now I choose to play a bit of scale on the G7 chord, or the G9 chord. Adding a scale straight up from the B, the 3rd of the G9, to the A, the 9th of the G. Anyways, I'm moving up. On the C major 9 I choose to go all the way up to the D. On that D on the C major in the 3rd bar, I just choose to go down the arpeggio. In the last bar, I'll come up with what fits there for the ending. Looking at the idea on the D minor 7 chord. Connecting this with the G7 chord. When I made up this idea for the 2-5-1 leg, I imagined something not crazy just going up for the first two bars. I want to connect these two lines with a little piece of scale, because else I don't get there. So. Going down the scale from the high E towards that B, and before the B adding a chromatic note. So how did I know that I wanted to go to that B? There's a lot of experience in what sounds good and what doesn't sound good, but also thinking logically. That B is centered in the middle of the D minor 9 chord. Basically, it sounds very logical to go there. The C on the D minor 9 chord has a very strong leading effect towards that B because of the half step from the C to the B, and the A supports that from underneath. Continuing up the G7 scale. Basically just running up that scale, not much to it. This line fits with the D minor 9 in a motivic way. It's kind of a continuous line going up, leading towards the C major chord. You can go anywhere, but I choose to go up to that high D, go up at the end. If I continue the line, I do not reach the high D. This does not matter, because the line is very much pointing towards that C major chord anyway. The B is leading so much towards that C, so it's obvious that the C comes. But we don't want that C because it's boring. We skip the C and jump to the D. The line's like this. And then we get a little bit excited because the listener wants that C there. But we're playing jazz, we don't want to give the listener always what they want. On the C major 9, I run down that arpeggio. Running up the D minor. Running up the G7. I'm going down to make an opposite movement on the C major. I like the arpeggio on the C major at the end, but I do not like that ending. I think I can make that nicer. I'll, I'm going to change that. So I put a little scale in there from the E to the B. I like that much better because then the C is not so much in the focus. So fitting an end to this. Continuing down the scale on C major, using the earlier 1, 2, 3, 1 scale pattern twice. Start, continue and end. Start with an idea in bar 1. Just start. Think about what could sound great in the next part. Make a nice ending. After this you put in the glue. The glue are those small approach notes, the leading tones, the encirclings and whatnot. Three examples on how to construct great easy 2-5-1 lines. 
Playing up the scale on D minor. Normally I would stop on the C to figure out what I want to do next, but this time, well, D minor chord, D minor scale, let's go. On the G7 bar, I continue the scale, starting out with the E on the 1 and on the 1 and hitting that F, the real target note. Since I want to emphasize the G7 chord, I hit the D on the second beat. From D I play up to that high G, so basically a little encircling there, going to the F, going down to the D, and then just moving up the scale again. So two times up the scale. Leading directly and perfectly to that C on the C major chord. But I really do not like when I hit the root chord note on the root on the beat, it sounds so plain, I think. Very classical ending, but we're playing jazz. I go on to play that D. On that C chord. Now it suddenly sounds much more hip. Going towards that C, the leading tone, the B, the lead so much towards that C, but going and emphasizing the D and just going down that scale. That sounds very nice to me. <laughs> to end the line in bar 4, I use a small arpeggio triad, the E minor in the third inversion. This line was full of scales and almost no arpeggios. Thinking this could be different, you do not need to start entirely over. Just change a few things. Reusing the D minor scale run. Again, going into the G7 chord, hitting that E. And then going to the F and jumping to the D. Then I change the direction and go down on the G7 scale. Going down that scale. Getting right into a really great leading tone towards the E. I'm using the 7th, the F of the G7 towards the E, the 7th to the 3rd. And then on the C major, I do some arpeggios. So first, an E minor arpeggio as an extension of the C major 7, and then a 1, 2, 3, 5 pattern. Ending with a little up and down line on the B in the last bar. So the whole line. Remember to use what you practice in your playing. I still want more arpeggios into my line because this is what I have practiced. So more arpeggios. To really learn the D minor scale, I just continue with this in the first bar, keeping the same D minor run up. In the G7 bar, I keep repeating my old idea, stolen from the earlier line, the E, F, D, C. Then I add a chromatic approach note to the G9 arpeggio and move the pace to triplets. Adding the arpeggio gives me the big stretch of saxophone that I cover. So I cover uh, from low to high on the saxophone. I like that. The F and the A at the end of the line encircles the G of the C major chord. I run down the scale pattern 5, 3, 2, 1. And I hit that B the 7th on the C major. Hitting the D on the 4th bar going down the scale. Then 
The line consists of a couple of basic structures and the glue. The glue is passing tones, encirclings and chromatic approach notes. More on constructing jazz lines. I really recommend you to just start. Start constructing your own jazz lines. Play a scale from the root of the chord. Play an arpeggio from the root of the chord. Just start. If you need more material on how to make lines, what to practice, how to begin, take a look in the description below for the two playlists on chords and scale exercises and much more on chords and scales. Two playlists in the description below. I see more and more questions and generally more comments in the comment section. Keep it coming, I love the chat and the communication. So feel free to ask questions and give comments in the comment section below. Your support in likes, subscribes and shares are really, really appreciated. All links mentioned in this video are available in the description below. Play music and have fun.